Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Isa and in today's video I will give you a full walkthrough of the new Vita planners. So if you've seen any of my videos or if you know of Printstick, you probably are familiar with this planner already. However, there have been some updates made to this planner. First of all, there are different color options to choose from. And this planner comes either dated, undated, and you can pick between a Monday, Sunday, or hybrid starts. And if you pick a Monday, I will show you that means that the months and the weeks will start on a Monday but you can also choose your planner to start on a Sunday and that will mean that both the weeks and the months will start on a Sunday and the hybrid version means that your months will start on a Sunday but your weeks will start on a Monday. You can also choose to have the weeks of this planner and I'll go into more detail in a second but this is a weekly spread. You can choose to have this hourly format so as you can see, you have the hours here on the left or you can choose to just have blank columns and then you can organize your days as best suits you. Now, I just want to mention if you get this planner, you can also bundle up and you will see the bundle options on the website right next to the listing and you can save a lot. So if this is your first planner purchase, that's a great option. And if it's not your first planner purchase, it's also a great option because you can choose exactly which items you want in your bundle so you can customize the bundle and still get a great discount. And if you just want to get this planner, make sure to enter this code at checkout for a special discount. This is your cover page and the idea here is that you can create your very own image because if you remember when you go back to your documents library and I'm using GoodNotes 5 here, that first cover page is a miniature that you're going to see for your planner or whichever document you are using. So having a cover page will make it easier for you to recognize what that document is and also it can look cute here in your library of documents. Now here on your cover page you will have all these buttons and let me zoom in a little bit so you can see. And actually this Vita Planner comes with your cover page and this button is a little darker than the other button so that means that this is where you are. This button will take you to this cover page and you also get like a back cover so I've used this page in the past to keep the covers, you know, so that they're handy within the same planner. You can keep stickers or widgets that you use often. This is at the end of the planner. So if I go to my miniatures view, which is these four squares at the top left, I'm almost right at the end of the planner. Okay, so these two buttons, that's what they are. This is my front cover and this is my back cover. After that, we have our index button and that will open this index page, which I will show you in a second what it is for. And once you have your planner open like this, then that first cover page will be linked to the top part of your spiral. So if you tap there from any page, you will get back to this cover page. After that, we have a few icons and I'm going to skip these because they will be shown as we go further in the planner and you also have links to your months. So I'm not sure you can tell in the camera, but here you have the first letter of each month. This particular planner runs from January to December of 2021. So if I tap on the J, I'm going to open the month of January. I'm gonna go back to my cover once more just to swipe and show you after the cover you get to this welcome page which can take you to uh, Princeton social media and the shop and to open a link you would just tap on it click on yes and then the link will open on your browser from here you keep going and then you get this useful info page and on this page is where you will find a code that you can use to download different assets that can be useful for this planner so if you get the dated version Version, the code is going to be on this top right corner. After this page we get to the index page which you can also access by tapping on the middle part of the spiral from any page. So let's say that I'm right here, I just tap in the middle of the spiral and my index is going to open. Now the purpose of this page is that you can label your blank tabs that you have here on the right side. So you can use this blank space to write the word or the category for which this tab is going to be and so on for the rest of the tabs. You get eight blank tabs or sections that you can access from anywhere in the planner. And to access each of these sections, all you do is tap on one of these tabs and then that section is going to open. 
These pages come completely blank, but they do have a dot grid, so it can help you better guide your designs. Again, tap on the middle of the spiral to go back to your index page. And we are going to keep going. Here you go to your favorites. This is going to be a page that will be accessible from anywhere in the planner. So any info or tasks or things that you want to have handy, you can keep on this page. We keep going and as you can see, this second tab lit up, which is my calendar tab. And if you get the dated version of this planner, you will get your yearly calendar here. You will also have each of the months linked. So if I tap on October, I'm going to go to the month of October. And to go back to my calendar, I just tap on this second tab here and my calendar is going to open. If you get this planner undated, then this page will be completely blank. But remember, you'll get a code. And with that code, you will be able to download the current yearly calendar. So you can always come back here and update the calendar page. Okay, now I'm gonna tap on this little eye here, my third tab, and this is my yearly view. You get 12 boxes, you can use these however you want. You could use them to keep track of birthdays, so you give each of the boxes a month and then you just write down who has a birthday during that month. I've also used this page to keep track of my goals. So at the end you know, of the previous year, I would open this page and set up the goals that I want to achieve in the following year. Now from here, if you swipe, then you get to your monthly calendars. These are all tabbed and linked here. As you can see, if I tap on each of the tabs, that tab will light up to tell me where I am. Now, you can also access the weekly spreads in this planner directly from this monthly view. And to do that, you have to tap on the top left corner of the first day of the week. So in this case, this is Monday, but remember, it could also be Sunday. So whichever day you have first, you go to the top left corner of that box and that will open the weekly layout. Okay, so this is what a weekly page looks like in the Vita Planner. You have your days up here, and as I mentioned, you have the option to get this planner with the time slots, or you can also get it with all blank columns. Now to go back, for example, to my month of April, I can simply click on the tab here like we did before, or let me go back to the week. You can tap on the label here, and I also wanted to mention that now you have these arrows and that's one of the new features of the Vita Planner this year. And these arrows allow you to navigate through the weeks of this particular month. So you can go to the following weeks and you can also go back to the previous weeks. Another thing that's special about the Vita Planner is that all these tabs, I'll zoom in so you can see better. So as you can see, you have a little dot here. So from here on, all of these tabs to the right are specifically linked to this month. So in this case, all of these tabs will be linked to April only. That means that when I go to May, I have the same tabs or the same icons, but these tabs belong to May. And I will show you what they are. These first four are your grid papers. The first one is a dot spread. The second one is a rule page. Then you open your graph paper. And lastly, you have an old blank page. Now, I wanted to mention, I've seen some people assign a category for each one of these four pages because even though they have different backgrounds or grids, they are all blank, so you can decide what those categories can be. For example, if every month you have to keep notes from meetings that you have at work, then your first section here or your dotted spread can be for those notes. Then your rule page here could be to keep track of your children's classes or homeworks or something like that. Really, this planner has so much space and so many ways in which you can customize it and keep everything separated by month because after your grid pages, you get to all of these other spreads that I will show you and these are also linked to whichever month you are at. So the first one is a weekly spread and this is just like an alternate weekly spread that you can use. I also like to put here my week overview. So things that are repetitive that I pretty much have to do every Monday, every Tuesday, I just keep them here as a reference just to make sure that I don't forget them. But you can use this however you want. You then get a timetable spread. Then you have a to-do page and you just have a lot of space here to write errands or lists, things you need to get done. 
then you get to your health page and I like this a lot because you can keep track of your workouts you can keep track of your sleep, your water intake, and you can also keep track of your meals all on the same page. And again, these are unique to each of the months. So if you want to use this for four weeks, you would just duplicate this page and keep four copies. So next time you go to health, all you have to do is scroll through the four copies that you created and then your whole month will be complete. You do also get another spread that's more specific to meals only in case that you cook, you know, for your whole family. You might have more room to write down maybe the groceries that you're missing, things like that. It's just a little bit bigger and you also have a water tracker on this same page. Now then you go to your vision board page and this is pretty much a blank page. You can just add images, words or anything that you want to keep you inspired. And since you have one of these per month, I feel like it's nice to be able to just update this page every month. Next you get to your project page and you have room to enter two projects at a time one on each page you have room to enter you know the description the ideas you have for the project goals tasks and on this idea section you can also add photos of what the finished project should look like in case that it's some handcraft or something like that in case you need some inspiration or guidance then you get to your budget tab and here you can keep track of your expenses because you have room to enter the date, the description of whichever item we're talking about, how much was spent and any notes so you can enter the method of payment here if you want. And you have the same on the following page so you have a ton of space to really keep track of each item. If you are selling something you could also use this to keep track of income or orders. You can still write the date, what the item was, how much money you made or how much you charged for the item and then you have room for notes. And the last tab we have here within a month is the tracker. So this is a habit tracker, you've probably seen this before. All you have to do is write down the habit here on the left and then you have 31 boxes that you can tick off or cross or anything you want just to keep track of when you did each habit or not. And if I swipe left from here, I will get to the following month, which in this case is June. Now, all of the months work the same way, so they all have the same tabs. And what I will do now is go to the last tab of December, so my habit tracker, and then I'm just going to swipe left from here. And as you can see, my first blank section opened, just so you get a little sense of where we are in the planner. And then from here, each section contains one page only. Of course, you can duplicate them and add as many as you need. You can also go to your blank grid papers, which are going to be located right at the end of the planner so that you can populate these sections and have more space. Then you have all of your sections here. I'm going to go to the last one over here. And if I swipe left from here, then I get to my notes page. And this page is also special because you will have it linked throughout the planner. So no matter which month you are at or anywhere else in the planner, you will always have access to this page through this tab here that has the little pencil. And if I tap on my last tab here, I will open this page that has some buttons and this will take me to even more spreads that I have available in the planner. So the first one will take me back to my welcome dashboard that I showed you before. I'm going to go back here. Then you can also jump to your info page. Then you have a few alternate weekly spreads and you can have these starting on a Monday or a Sunday. So this is a horizontal weekly spread in case that you want to use it. If you want to exchange your current weekly spreads for one of these, I do have a video showing you how to do it, but basically you would export this page as an image here from GoodNotes, then you would save it to Camera Roll, go to your existing week and then paste the image as, you know, a sticker and then adjust it and then you can start using it. Again, I'm going to link down below the tutorial on where you can see how to do that. Then you have yet another type of weekly spread. This is vertical as well, but it's divided in three boxes. You have it with a Monday start and a Sunday start as well. Let's go back and after my alternate weeks, I have a schedule page, another alternative. You will go back and you have a semester page. This is very helpful if you are keeping track of classes at all or if you are a student. 
then we have a directory page so you can keep track of your contacts you have space to write down the name email phone number address and notes you have a birthday spread here so you can keep track of birthdays an accounts page if you have trouble remembering the hundreds of passwords that we all need to log into all these different websites you have another project page this one is a little bit bigger so you have more room to enter more info about a single project at once you get a gray page and i always like to include this because i've had some white stickers in the past and just to keep track of them for example when you are dating a planner i like to put a color background with a white number sticker on top and if i keep those somewhere that is white then i'm not going to be able to see them that's why keeping them on a gray page is helpful and lastly you have a daily page now this is just the one daily page but if you wanted to use it for every day of every week that's possible you can make seven copies and put those seven copies behind each week then copy all those seven copies and paste them behind the following week then if we swipe left from here then we get to those blank papers that i mentioned before you have an old white page you have your dot grid page and this one doesn't have any tab selected it's not linked to anything so you can freely move this page copy it and populate any of your section or use it for whatever you want you also have the rule page and you have your graph paper you do have a few more blank pages and here you have the same papers but without the tabs in case that you just want to take a bunch of notes and you don't want to be distracted with the tabs you also have this option and then you get to your back cover page and lastly you just have a completely blank color page okay now before we go i just want to show you how i created a spread on this planner to give you maybe some inspiration i didn't mention this the whole video but this bottom empty part so here you have like a blank area at the bottom of the planner that is your widget space think of it as an extra sidebar where you can enter you know important info or things that you need to get done this week but not in a day in particular so you can just write down here for example i wrote groceries i knew that i needed to go buy food but i didn't know when exactly i would go so i just write down what i need you know as i think of it or as i realize that i need it you can also just decorate with widgets here i have some other notes and yeah this is how i used my weekly spread so i'm using the ones that have the hours on the left side but sometimes i don't want the hours to show so all i do and i'll show you um let me open my tools here so if I go get my eraser and I erase this, you'll see that I actually hit the numbers. I'm going to go back. And so if you want to do that, you just click on your pen tool in GoodNotes and then you just pick the color white. And for example, here, I actually wrote down that my appointment is at 11 a.m. But 11 is like all the way down here, which I covered. So what I'll do is I'll just cover these numbers as well because I don't really need them. It's I don't want the wrong time to show when I'm doing an activity. I have the exact time set up here anyway. And although this planner is dated, I just added some extra stickers that I made myself. I had them already. So I just used them to cover the current dates just so that they look a little bigger and a little easier to identify. To create this type of date dots, as I call them, you would just go to your highlighter tool. You can pick the biggest size or the middle size and then just draw a dot on the screen. Then you just tap on your text tool, you tap on the screen and you write down whichever number. Here's my number. So that's how you can create your date dots like the ones I have here. All right, guys, so that's the end of this video. I really hope that you found it helpful and that you have a good idea of everything that's included in the Vita Planner and how everything works. If you have any questions or if I missed anything, just drop me a comment below. I'll get back to you as quick as I can. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.